forward in the coming weeks to the campaign ahead to see how the opposition parties explain their part in all this. Thank you. I now call Jenny Mara to be followed by John Mason. Presiding officer, Dundee is facing £23 million of cuts to local services. This is the worst local government settlement in real terms across the whole of Scotland. The SNP tell us that there is no alternative. They say these cuts are coming from Westminster. Now, the cut that is coming from George Osborne in real terms to Scotland is 4.7%, but the cut coming from John Swinney to Dundee is 5.5%. An enhanced package of cuts for Dundee and other deprived areas across Scotland, austerity plus. With the exception of teachers, presiding officer, Every employee, and Joan McAlpine might want to listen to this, every employee of Dundee City Council has received a voluntary redundancy notice. The SNP fought the last election, guaranteeing that there would be no public sector compulsory redundancies, which Mr Swinney reiterated today. What he didn't say, that they would be politely and quietly asked to go by letter on their desks. So... Joe Fitzpatrick. In the member's own words, can she understand the difference between voluntary and compulsory? Jenny Mara. Yes, and you have asked every council worker in Dundee, with the exception of teachers, to go quietly, to take their redundancy. So, while council staff in Dundee read their voluntary redundancy letters, they see the services they have worked so hard to maintain slashed by this settlement from John Swinney. Where will the cuts fall? The SNP's finance convener in Dundee has said that he is happy to maintain the council tax freeze, so he must have prepared his budget. And he must know where the local SNP plan the cuts to fall, but he has yet to come clean with the people of Dundee. Now, what we have is an SNP finance secretary in Edinburgh happy to deliver a Tory budget in Scotland and an SNP council in Dundee happy to be good foot soldiers and visit that Tory budget on our local services. Stronger for Scotland? I don't think so. So Kezia Dugdale was right yesterday to suggest that people who can afford it should pay a bit more tax because it is all very well saying that you are stronger for Scotland, praising public services and those who deliver them while undermining them by delivering eye-watering cuts. And our leader was right to harness the powers of this parliament. The SNP have been desperate for years for the power to put a penny on tax. They campaigned for a penny on tax in 1999 and again in 2003. And we were reminded that of that on TV last night when we saw the First Minister herself campaigning for a penny for Scotland. She says every week that she wants consensus. Now she has it on the most important political issue. The Liberals said last week that they agree with a penny on tax. Kezia Dugdale made Labour's position clear yesterday. And the First Minister now has the power that she has campaigned for all her political life. So I would fully expect the government to seize that power and initiative when it comes to the vote tonight. Because when I heard on the radio yesterday the SNP saying that they wanted to keep things in line with the rest of the UK. I nearly choked on my tea. What utter disarray. Presiding officer, let me go back to Dundee. Last week... Oh, wow. Not right now. Not Order, right please. Now. Last week, the Scottish Government with the British Government announced a huge package of funding to support and diversify the oil, oil and gas industry in Aberdeen and prepare it to seize the opportunities of decommissioning. Now, this is very welcome. For two years, I have been raising the opportunities of decommissioning in this chamber. Oil platforms have been sailing down the east coast of Scotland, past Aberdeen and Dundee, on their way down to Hartlepool to be de decommissioned there. Now, this seems like a terrible loss of work and industry to Scotland and the North East. So I have written to the First Minister, to Amber Rudd, the UK Energy Secretary, and to David Mundell to ask each of them for a meeting to see how the rest of the North East and Dundee can share in this investment. Because, presiding officer, in Dundee, we need a working river, not just a waterfront. Because we desperately need work, and I think John Swinney knows this. But to add insult to injury, presiding officer, 
Dundee has been dealt the worst local government settlement in the whole of Scotland, 5.5%, just behind Shetland and the Western Isles. But our levels of poverty and deprivation, as John Swinney knows, are eye-watering in comparison with those places. Now, this insult was exemplified when Dundee's two MPs, Stuart Hosey and Chris Law, elected last year on an anti-austerity agenda, declined to comment on Mr Swinney's cuts to Dundee, saying that the issue was a matter for colleagues north of the border. <laughs> Presiding officer, this is a disgrace. Presiding officer, this budget and the SNP at best are taking Dundee for granted, but in reality, we are the SNP's sold out city in Scotland. And I seriously hope at decision time tonight and in his budget, John Swinney can redress this. Thank you. I call John Mason to be